So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a, a, a great debate at this a lovely sunny afternoon. Um, the bounce, the crunch, heat death. No, not a new range of uh, cereals or a set of video games. These are the current scientific theories about how our universe will end. But there is little uh, there is little consensus, and the end begins to look as deeply mysterious as the beginning of the universe. Should we conclude that there is no end to the universe, and that once in, in existence it cannot be extinguished? Or is time part of the universe and talk of a beginning or end a mistake? Or is our difficulty in being able to frame an answer to these questions a sign of the limitation of human understanding itself? Here today to uh, uh, debate these points is uh, Stefan Gillen, am I right, who is a physicist at the University of Sheffield. His research focuses on how quantum physics might change our understanding of the beginning of the universe. Chandrima Ganguly is a cosmologist at the University of Cambridge. Their research involves testing early universe models and using cosmology to constrain particle physics. And on my far left, Alexander Franklin, who is a lecturer in philosophy at King's College London. His research explores why there is anything other than fundamental physics, and his goal is to develop explanations of the existence of these special non-fundamental sciences. So, as we crack on now to uh, address these questions, what I'm going to do first is to ask each of our speakers in turn to answer very succinctly a simple and deep uh, question. Is the universe going to end, and if so, how? Okay, Chandrima first. Well, um, as a physicist, uh, the way I approach problems is to come up with a verifiable model and then try to test it. Unfortunately, as a cosmologist, this becomes quite a difficult enterprise because it's very hard to gain direct observational and experimental evidence uh, of the history, uh, particularly the beginning of the universe. Now, the current theory of gravity, which is very well accepted, um, is a theory of general relativity. And there has so far been no observational experimental evidence to go against this theory. And within this theory, space and time are seen to be uh, one object. And we talk about the space-time continuum curving uh, based on what kind of matter we put in it. And the matter in turn moves along the space-time curvature. So within the solutions to the equations in general relativity, we have uh, predicted several ends. So we can have a cyclic universe, one that I'm particularly interested in. We can have a big crunch where the universe has an explosive end. We can have a universe that expands forever. Um, and in fact, it expands infinitely. Now, all of these different scenarios are uh, brought about by changing the matter content that you would put in our universe. So for me to answer this question, the first thing we really need to know is what kind of matter we put in our universe. For example, um, in the current day accelerated expansion seems to be mediated by a mysterious component called dark energy, which we don't really have a good understanding of. The second thing is the nature of gravity itself. So I said that I would be uh, working within the paradigm of general relativity. This in itself was a paradigm shift from Newtonian gravity. Now, we know the very beginning of the universe uh, will, is probably governed by a different paradigm from general relativity. Gravity at very high energies and very small length scales, probably some kind of paradigm of quantum gravity is needed to explain the beginning of the universe. And then I ask, perhaps we need a completely new paradigm to explain the very end, the future of our universe. In fact, even now, people think that perhaps dark energy is not the answer to why the universe is accelerating in this way, in its expansion. And people are doing some research into modifying the theory of general relativity. Finally, and this is a slightly out there point, perhaps we need to consider that the way we construct our theories, our scientific theories, are based on mathematical and logical form. This is the method that I choose as a scientist, but I think it's important to highlight that it is a method, and strictly speaking philosophically, which I'm sure Alex will elaborate on, it may not be the case that the future of our universe can be explained by theories that follow this mold. So overall, my stance is that continuing a, a line of scientific inquiry, if not 
helping us to converge to an answer about the very end, will at least help us to nuance that discussion. And given how the history of science has evolved, we can at least say that by nuancing that discussion, by byproducts, we end up discovering and progressing, well, human knowledge a little bit more along the way. Thank you, Chandrima. Um, next, I'll ask Stefan, another scientist, to give his take on the question of, is the universe going to end? Right, so thank you for the question. It's a very good question. Um, I think I'll follow on, on some of the points that, that Chandrima made. Um, but first of all, I want to give my, my answer, which is no, I don't think the universe uh, can end. Um, and the point I want to make is that sort of we have, within the framework of our current theories, we have different scenarios that you might think of as the end of the universe, um, because they seem sort of violent, drastic events that, that seem to bring the universe to an end. But for me, these are sort of more failures of the theories themselves. So I really see these as a breakdown of the theory that we have and the sign that we need a better theory in, in, in its place. Um, so I'd like to make um, uh, focus on a specific example, which is the Big Crunch. Um, so just to sort of explain a bit what that means. Um, so people, I think, are familiar with the Big Bang as the beginning of the universe. So we sometimes think of that as the beginning. Uh, the universe came into existence and sort of space and time sort of started being there at the Big Bang and then the universe started expanding and of course becoming uh, very big uh, today. And so depending on the assumptions that you put in, and Chandrima already mentioned that there are quite a few assumptions that, that need to be made, uh, you might have the, the reverse of that process. You might have a contraction of the universe as a whole at some point and then that contraction process would sort of accelerate and uh, at the very end, you would have this kind of violent event where sort of the universe shrinks down to zero size, mathematically speaking, right? So everything really ends up in this, in this point. And it's quite difficult to, to describe that even with words because we don't really know what, what, what happens. And, but if you try to do a calculation, you, you calculate sort of the temperature, the, the energy density um, of the universe, you just, you know, everything goes to infinity. So the theory really just breaks down. So my take would be that this does not mean that the, this is the end of the universe, but it means that the theory fails. And I would strongly advocate the need for a quantum theory of gravity. So, so the theories and models that I'm exploring uh, are based on that idea, sort of the, the classical description of space and time coming to an end, perhaps, but being replaced by a kind of quantum uh, transition into something else. So that's how I would see the end, rather as a transition into something new by quantum physics. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, to get a philosopher's perspective, over to Alex. Thanks. Uh, uh, so yeah, so as a philosopher, it probably won't surprise you. My answer is it depends and, and maybe. Um, so is the universe going to end? Well, I guess we should probably be a bit more precise about what we mean by universe and end. So. Um, so if we're going to ask, like, is the universe going to end? Well, let's look around us, all this stuff, you know, the Earth and the Sun and the galaxy, etc. Well, is that going to end? Then yes. And so by the universe, the stuff we refer to around us, you know, the Earth will be engulfed by the Sun at some point and the solar system will be sort of swallowed into the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. And, you know, all of this kind of stuff will end. So in that sense, yes, the universe will end. Maybe everything will be absorbed into black holes and those black holes might evaporate and then there's nothing. But, you know, as a physicist, we should, or as physicists together, we should think about the other kind of content. So not just this kind of structured content, but particles and fields. Will that end? Well, it looks like, consistent with the empirical, empirical data we have available, it looks like that stuff won't really end. It looks like there's just going to be a kind of heat, death, everything just expands and gets bigger and bigger and bigger until the kind of average density goes down to approximately zero in any particular region of space-time. But that's not so much at end. Then the second question is, will it, like, what do we mean by end? So um, everything, the universe has two ends. And why do we say, when we say, is the universe going to end, why do we think about the future one rather than the past one? If we think about the past one, then we say, does the universe have an end? Well, the Big Bang seems like a kind of end. Maybe there was something before it, who knows, but it seems like that was a kind of end of the universe. And why might we want to think about the beginning, the sort of the past and the future is kind of interchangeable? Well, I think it might be useful to kind of make an analogy with up and down. We used to think that 
sort of, there was obviously a privileged direction, obviously there's a difference between up and down, but that's just because we're on the Earth. If we imagine being in interstellar space and the up-down distinction loses any kind of content, if we imagine being a kind of right at the sort of future kind of end of the universe when there are no kind of stable processes or structures, then we might well think that there is no meaning to past and future in such a context. And so the idea that we should really privilege the past end rather than the future end as the real end or the other way around, I think we should be careful about. So yes, it depends. Thank you. Um... And now we're going to move on to some specific questions and uh, debate each of these in turn. So the first one of these questions. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.